ain't gonna lie, I'm exhausted. Like, I'm so tired. Like, y'all, at first I was working overtime. I was pumping these videos out and everything. Hi, I'm Vontae. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you're a, if you're a subscriber. But yeah, um, okay, what was I saying? I really want to make this video because, uh, Bia, like, I don't know, that's a topic that I, I feel like I could speak on Bia a little bit because I listen to some of Bia's music. Let me look at my Apple Music library and see how many songs by Bia that I have in my library. Okay, I have four Bia songs and then I have two other songs that have Bia included. Technically, it's five Bia songs. So yeah, that's nothing. But anyways, I still know a little bit about Bia. But basically, uh, this video is called The Problem With Bia. I feel like Bia's potential is very high, but she doesn't execute. It's rare that she executes. One of my favorite things that happens every so often in rap music is when two artists collaborate and it almost feels like they fit together perfectly on a track. Whether it's the cadence of their words, the way they're going back and forth on the song, or simply them matching each other's fly. And luckily for Bia, she has a few songs with different artists where the features, slow, and her raps fit together perfectly. From London with J. Cole. Okay, London was a good song with Bia, but the only problem is that Bia's lyrics, you know, it could be a little more... It's a little more deep, you know, she tends to stay very surface level, but I'm, I'm not surprised because most female rappers do. But yeah, that song is good. Like London with J. Cole and then J. Cole's part, he completely rips the whole song. Like J. Cole goes crazy and Bia just gives like, you know, surface level. But, you know, it is what it is. To her newest track, Pissed Off with Lil Okay, okay. And this shit was trash. Like somebody just pissed me off. Somebody just pissed me off. Like, no, Bia, come on, Bia. Like, the the, the hook, the court, hook, chorus, whatever. It could have been way better. Like, what? And then I feel, I don't know. I just feel like Bia was saying a whole bunch of nothing. Like, I think she even rhymed the same word a couple of times. Like, I just, I don't know. I just, it was given nothing. Like, it was really given nothing. Yachty, and of course, the whole lot of money remix with Nicki Minaj. But although I've been enjoying a couple of her singles, there's something I've been noticing about Bia, and I think we should talk about it. But first, welcome to the channel. Hey, Bro. hi, what's up? What did I see? And I do rap and pop culture commentary. So if you're into that, subscribe and hit the like button. Now, can I keep it real? Sometimes I don't really care for an artist's discography, and they pop out with a track that makes me reconsider read some literature and that's how i feel about bia's newest song let me just put y'all on right quick you know it's a catchy little bop it ain't nothing special oh besito is also good by bia with g herbo these, these niggas, niggas happen, they, they should wear some, some bro i, I would share my man before i share my dinero Teach me something, be my tutor, fuck them bitches, they buy suda. Okay, one more, y'all, one more. Bia goes hard in this I'm Geek and remix. Like, how did he like you, but don't buy you jewelry? I call him Poppy, I'm fucking him fluently. Feel like a virgin, but this shit ain't new to me. We go around like he fucking on two of me. What? With Lil Yachty, pissed off. Yes, it's a short and for the most part, sweet verse and serves as an opportunity for her to shit on her ops, who ever they might be okay but to me it finally see funny as hell she said whoever they might be no because who's be a who's be as uh feels like she's found her way in the female rap space and she's staying put in her own lane even if that means that almost every song will have a few subliminals because rapping about people's bms B see this is what i'm talking about bro like these lyrics are horrible bia what the hell? Like, Yachty should have helped her write her stuff because he, he be writing. Like, Yachty really be writing. So why he ain't help her write her stuff? Who playing down on their goals? Who really touching their goals? New bitches fucking your bros. Who really fake as they chain? Who baby mama a slut? Who really going outside? Because you ain't been doing enough. Who really wifing the hoe? Whole lot of niggas I know. Like, the only part that was decent was who really wife and a whole, whole lot of niggas I know. That's, like, the part that was decent out of all of that, in my opinion. But I'm not no expert, but, yeah, that shit is garbage. Being sluts and wives being 
cheery hose just feels very personal. If you're like me, you were introduced to Bia way back in 2021 with her breakout single, Whole Lot of Money. And that Damn, I can hear my AirPod echoing. Is it that loud? was the fifth single from her second EP, For Certain. Prior to this, I hadn't really heard a lot from Bia, to be honest. No, I think people really heard Bia from that Russ song. It was a Russ song. Was that before a whole lot of money? I don't know. And in a way, it seemed like she completely popped out of nowhere. It turns out she decided to become a rapper at a young age after attending studio sessions with artists and helping them record dropping out of college to bartend, and then making enough for her own studio sessions. After doing a little bit I mean, Bia is beautiful. Like, she's so beautiful. I feel like she's kind of boring, like, personality-wise. Maybe because I just don't know that much about her, but she's so pretty. Like, she's pretty. I would put a baby in her. With more research on her, I realized that she was actually a reality TV show baddie. But wait, not that kind of baddie. But she was part of a show on Oxygen mm -hmm. called Sisterhood of Hip Hop, which is executively produced by T.I. Essentially, the show stars five female rappers who navigate their way through the male-dominated music industry. But the cast and the show itself is so weird. It's like they mixed in more seasoned artists like Diamond from Crime Mob to newer artists like Bia, who clearly were much newer on the scene. I'll be honest and say I have literally never heard of this. Okay, can we like get to it? Like, where is this video going? Because can, can we get to it? Like, this is like, I don't care about her on TV. I do not care. What's the problem with Bia? Let me know. Show, But somehow I do feel inclined to go back and watch it. Based on some of these clips, though, I'm not sure what to make of it. It seems like T.I. wanted a combination of the messiness of love and hip-hop but the vibe of okay who am i kidding he was trying to do a female rap version of love and hip-hop even vibe magazine wrote an article show damn she's still talking about this this show <laughs> oh my god what is it sisterhood of hip-hop i wonder what's the ratings for the show damn it took forever for it to pop up 6.6 .6. okay okay casing how the show was more about the drama of these ladies' lives rather than solely focusing on their music. And this feels like a bit of foreshadowing with Bia's career if we're keeping it real. Because we all know that if everyone is not feeling your music and you have a feeling they may not be feeling your music, the next best thing for you to do is... Is be for people for no reason and just start fake beefs. And it's crazy because Bia be all up, up under Nicki Minaj, but she still is like barely popular. Like compared to the female rappers out, Bia is like at the bottom. I think she just needs one of them hits. Like a whole lot of money wasn't enough. She need, she need another hit. And then uh, how good did London do? Let's see, has Bia had a lot of songs on the Hot 100? She had three songs on here. Weeks on the chart. Okay, one week on the chart. Yeah, London was really a good song, though. Add a little bit of drama to the mix. One person that I blindly envisioned Bia collaborating with very early in her career was Cardi B. And the reason why is not only did Cardi support Bia very early on, you can even see her in lives singing a whole lot of money, it also felt like they could have a track that meshed both of their sounds. However, we all know that one of the smartest choices that Bia made business-wise essentially turned her into having to choose sides, which included being able to snag a Nicki feature. It's crazy because I was so excited to watch this video, but now I'm just like, um, Bia is so boring that I don't even want to hear about her no more. Like, that's, that's crazy. No, I'll just play. She's not, uh, I don't know. Her on a whole lot of money and paved the way for Super Freaky Girl Queen Mix and even going on tour with Nicki. Now, if you remember. Damn, I forgot about Super Freaky Girl Queen Mix. I wonder, did people listen to that that wasn't Barb's? I don't even think people that wasn't Barb's listened to Super Freaky Girl. Like, they probably did a little bit, but 
Or I, I love Nikki. I did not really like Super Freaky Girl. I think I did used to play the Queen mix. I think I did used to play that in the car. Look at me lying. Remember this era between the lives of Nikki and Bia? Social media saying that Bia was in the bathroom deleting Cardi B tweets and all of that. Not Nikki had 300,000 people on her live. God damn. Listen, it was hilarious because previously Bia was praising Cardi on live. Between her hopping on live to say that she never switched up on Cardi because she never knew her in real life, dissing Cardi on Dreezy's which duh remix with lines poking fun. Her verse on what? Damn, where is it? Oh, it's right here. Is Bia on here? Oh, she just say, just say Bia. Can't have your nigga back. I play a Bia. I heard bitches popping. Oh, they put her right at the beginning. I mean, she snapped a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, she snapped a little bit, just a little bit. With lines poking fun at Cardi not being able to catch the beat on what would have been the remix of Ice Spice's Munch, and always crying on live about Offset. Wow. See, look how time flies. Look at us now. <laughs> the beat that I somewhat enjoyed listening to quickly became someone whose career was revolving around another woman in rap music at least that's how it felt i feel like you i can't say much because what career has she really had like i, I and i feel like a evil i feel like a hater saying that like just saying that made me feel like a hater but i'm just saying like if we just looked at her billboard charts and she was on there three times one of them she was on there for a week then it's like besides whole lot of money and that song with Russ nobody really knows beer for real you only get so many tracks to continuously poke fun at or beef with another rap artist until it begins to look like you are fishing for a response and maybe even clout if your best verses features and songs only it's crazy how sleepy I am like I'm so sleepy turn heads and cause social media chatter because you're dissing what exactly is it giving then again i can't deny that many songs that are popping especially i thought she was gonna say she can't deny that be as talented we in the female rap space involve at least one bar about the artist being better than all these other girls so is it really any different from that but funny enough we know that cardi clapped back directly on Megan and Glorilla's wannabe remix, which not that I it's a bitch, don't nobody want to be you. <laughs> I think about it, it feels like that song did not have the desired effect that they thought it would, or maybe Cardi just used it to clap back. Because surely I enjoyed Cardi's bars on the song, and I even like it a little bit better than the original. Maybe it's the fact that it feels like they kind of slapped her on the beginning of the song yeah like why would they do that they just put her like right at the beginning that song like i feel like that song just shouldn't start with cardi at the beginning like remix it just cardi does not need to be at the beginning like why would they do that instead of either saving her verse for last or squeezing her between the two artists clearly the right. track struck a nerve because bia hasn't been letting up ever since and while many of the critiques i hear of bia include the fact that her music is straight up boring something yeah i heard that a lot that her music is just boring i feel like she's just boring that i i understand right she has more of a nonchalant flow she's kind of like a baddie no because little tyler got a nonchalant flow but i wouldn't say his music is boring she's kind of like a baddie-fied version of caribou you know when you think about it my view is that she's boring unless she's talking her ish or dissing because I find it just a little funny that not long ago she was accusing people of stealing her style and of course we cannot that's so crazy like that's such a crazy accusation unless she's noticing people that are under her steal her style because what I don't know I forget that she had a whole diss track ready to unleash on Cardi that sucked from the snippet that I heard online like, I felt secondhand embarrassment. This is why you need friends to tell you 
when something is not a good look. And that feels like another part of the problem, the need to always clap back in music or sneak diss because now it's popping years from now. Will these songs have the same effect? Will they age well? Will they sound great? Or were they only created? No. No. Damn, that is the problem in our generation. We need more music that we could listen to, like, in the next 10 years that's really going to sound like a classic. Created to serve the purpose of shutting these girls down right now. Present day. I don't know. But she did. But there is a lot of really good music out there. So I take that back. I'm just saying, uh, mainstream wise or this rap music wise we don't have a lot of songs that are going to be timeless it chat about cardi cheating on offset a few months back so i wonder how she knew about that if it's even true anyways what can we say bia has been out here doing her thing joining nikki on the gag city reloaded tour dropping some pretty good singles I feel a bit more interested in actually listening to some of her music now. And I don't know how. Actually, I told y'all I like about, you know, maybe five of her songs. I don't believe she's dropped an actual studio album. So maybe that's coming next. Also, this is so random. Do you I do not think Bia should drop an album. Sorry. Again, I'm not hating. I just. You know what I just realized? Bia really reminds me of Emil, the first female artist to sign to Rockefeller Records. More so aesthetically rather than sound-wise though, Emil just felt more gangsta. Something that apparently Jay-Z was pushing her to be and she didn't really enjoy that. And since then, she's faded away. We really need a docuseries on female rap artists that completely vanished out of the spotlight. But anyways, do you listen to Bia? And if so, what is your favorite? All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment your thoughts in the comments. Uh, peace, love, and abundance. Hope you have a good rest of your week. Go watch more of my videos.